Welcome, this is another video about exponents, but this one is now about rational exponents, so we have to deal with some fractions. All right, the first problem we're going to be working on here today says r to the 1 7th divided by r to the 2 thirds. So just like we did before, because we're dividing, we have to subtract our exponents. So that's going to look like r to the 1 7th minus 2 thirds. And I wrote those large so you can see them, but they are both in the exponent. Okay, now because we're subtracting two fractions, we need to find a common denominator. So that would look like r to the, well our common denominator is going to be 21. If you multiply 7 by 3, that gives you 21. So multiply the 1 over 7 by 3 over 3, so that's going to give us 3 over 21 minus Multiply the 2 over 3 by 7 over 7 to build up to 21. So this would be 14 over 21. Okay, so now that we have our common denominator, we can subtract. So that gives us a grand total of r to the negative 11 over 21. But again, when I read the directions, it says that all exponents should be positive. So that means our entire piece here then needs to get moved to the denominator. Some of you may be tempted to do the reciprocal of the exponent, but that doesn't make your whole fraction then, or the whole um, expression flip. So you want to do 1 over r to the 11 over 21, and that would be a perfectly legitimate answer. Or you can also write this if you really want to be crazy. You could write this as 1 over the 21st root of r to the 11th power. Okay, so either way, it just depends on how your instructor wants you to write it, but I am perfectly happy with your answer being left like that. Okay, problem two. This one has some coefficients as well to deal with. So we've got 8x to the third, y to the ninth, all to the one-third power. So just like we did before, we need to distribute our power to all three of these pieces. Okay, so I'm going to write this out in detail. So we have 8 to the one-third times x cubed to the one-third times y to the ninth, oopsie, to the one-third. That's in the other problem, sorry. To the one-third, there we go. Okay, so h to the one-third, that means you need to do the cube root of eight, or you can do that on your calculator as well, or ask yourself what times itself three times will give me eight, and then answer is two. Like we did before, powers to powers, that means we multiply. So 3 times a third is going to be, well, 3 times 1 is 3, divided by 3 gives us 1. So that'll give us an x to the first. y to the ninth to the one third. Again, you have to do a power to power, you multiply. So 9 times a third gives us 9 times 1, which is 9, divided by 3, which is 3. So this would be y to the third. So this answer is good, or if you'd rather, you can just write it as 2xy to the third, since that x has a 1 for the exponent. Okay, fantastic. The next problem is very similar to this one, but it's got two of these pieces to it. So I'm going to do this a little bit um, more quickly and not written out quite as much as I did here. So again, you have to distribute your power in your numerator. So you're going to have to distribute the half power to the 81, to the r to the 6, and to the 20th power, s to the 20th power. So that's going to look like, so 81 to the 1 half power is 9, because the square root of 81 is 9. Or you can ask yourself, what times itself 2 times will give me that 81, and that's a 9. Okay, then we're going to have r to the 6 to the 1 1 half. So again, because we have a power to a power, you want to multiply. So that's going to give us r to the 3rd. And s to the 20th to the 1 half power, power to power, you multiply. So that'll give you s to the 10th. So this is where I want to make a note. You have to remind yourself you do different things with coefficients that you do with powers. So coefficient, you do the power of that. But exponents, you end up multiplying. Okay, now in the denominator, again, we need to do the same thing. This one looks a little bit nicer because it's not a fraction. Um, so I'm going to do s or 3 to the second power, so that gives me a 9 as well. r to the fourth to the second power, so power to power we multiply, that's r to the eighth. s squared, or s cubed squared gives me s to the sixth. 
Okay, now we have this fraction. We keep, need to just keep simplifying because I see two R's and I see two S's. I also see two nines, so let's go ahead and wipe those out. If you want to put a one out front here, you can for your coefficient or just ignore it. Um, then now let's take a look at these R's. So I see an R to the eighth and I see an R to the third. My R to the eighth is in the denominator, so that one's obviously bigger. So I'm going to subtract these. Let me make, um, make my fraction. Um, if I subtract 3 minus 8, that gives me negative 5, so that means my r to the 5th is going to have to go in the denominator. Okay, again, you can also look at this as the 8 is in the denominator, that one's bigger, so that's how I know that's where my r goes. Now, for the s's, I've got an s to the 10th and I've got an s to the 6th. My s to the 10th is in my numerator, that one's a lot bigger again, so that means my s is going to go in my numerator. And when I do 10 minus 6, that gives me a grand total of 4. Okay, so that's my final answer, s to the 4th over r to the 5th. And last, but certainly not least, we have a big ugly fraction to a big ugly fraction power. <laughs> well, this one's not so big, but you know what I mean. So what I would probably do, again, like we've done before, is I would simplify what's in here first, so that way it makes stuff smaller, and then we can go ahead and do our power. So I see a 9. Okay, I don't think that one can get simplified anymore. Um, let's see, so we have a 9 here, and that's going to go in the numerator. Make my division bar. We have an x to the 5th and an x to the 3rd. Okay, so let me go ahead and highlight those. So I've got my x's here. So I want to subtract. My 5 is bigger, so that one's going to go in the numerator. So that's going to give me an x squared in the numerator. I have y to the 4th, and I have y to the negative 2. Hmm. So the 4 is bigger, this is going to go in the numerator, so I guess I really didn't need my fraction bar, but that's okay. We didn't know that ahead of time. Um, and then I can subtract these, so 4 minus a negative 2 is going to give me y to the 6th. Another way you could have thought about these y's is this one here has the y to the second has a negative exponent, so that's going to technically get moved up to the numerator. So I'd have y to the 4th, y to the 2nd, which would give me a total of y to the 6th. So either way you look at it, that's the answer you get. Okay, this is over 1, I guess, if you want to make a fraction out of it. You don't have to, though. All right, so 1 half power, again, I have to distribute that through. So distribute here, 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 and the 1, you know, 1 anything is just 1. So 9 to the 1 half power is 3. We did that one early. Oh, no, we didn't do that one earlier. So 3 squared gives me 9, or the square root of 9 is 3. So whichever way you want to look at it there. x squared to the 1 half power, so 2 times a half gives me a 1. And 6, or y to the 6 to the 1 half, 6 times a half gives me a 3. So that's going to be y to the 3rd. Again, because this denominator was 1, I don't even have to put that on here. And then, because this is an x to the 1, I think I'm going to write it a little bit neater as 3xy to the 3rd. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see by looking at these problems, the fractional exponents is just like what we did before with the whole number exponents. So it's nothing different, it's just a little bit uglier. And you have to think roots instead of stuff which means stuff gets smaller, instead of powers, which means stuff gets bigger. Okay, keep practicing on these, and good luck with your problems.